All right, everybody, in today's video, we're going to build a digital clock widget using Python's PyQt5 library. If you're new to this channel, I have previously released a course on PyQt5. In that series, we've downloaded the PyQt5 package. It's found within the library folder of our virtual environment within our project folder. If you don't have this package, you will need to download it. You can open up a terminal, then type the following command, pip install PyQt5, enter. So I already have it installed. Be sure that this package of PyQt5 is within your site packages folder. So let's begin. At the top of our Python file, we will need the following imports. Import sys. Sys means system. This module provides variables used and maintained by the Python interpreter. We would also need widgets. Widgets are the building blocks of a GUI application. From the package of PyQt5, we need to access the module of Qt widgets. Import the following. Q application Q widget. This is a generic widget. We'll turn our digital clock into its own widget. And Q label to work with labels. We will be using a layout manager, more specifically, QV box layout. There's another import we'll need too, from the package of PyQt5. Access the module of Qt core. The Qt core module, it provides functionality not related to GUI components. This is where we'll get a timer to keep track of the time. From this module, we will import Q timer. Q time and QT. QT is for alignment. We will create a class of digital clock. Instead of inheriting from the main window widget, we will inherit from the base class of Q widget. Q widget is a base class to create our own widgets. Our digital clock will be a widget. We will need a constructor, so let's define that. Define init pass and self. If there are any arguments to send to the parent, we will call the constructor of the parent, the super class. Super, call the init method. At the end of the constructor, what I like to do is call a method of initialize UI, init UI. This will be a separate method. Define init UI. There are no parameters besides self. And for now, I'll write pass. It's within this method that we will be designing the layout of the digital clock. Within the constructor, that's where we will be constructing all of the different entities for the clock. At the end of my Python file, I will add the following statement. If dunder name is equal to a string of dunder main. This statement will be true if we are running this program directly. To create an application, we will create an app object equals call the constructor within the class QApplication. As an argument to the constructor, we will pass in the following argument, access the module of sys ARGV, which means arguments. This would apply if we're running from command prompt or terminal, but we won't be doing that in this video. But it's nice just to set it up in case we do in the future. Now we are going to create a clock object. Clock equals, we will call the constructor, of our digital clock class. There are no arguments. Now the window doesn't appear. That's because we have to use the show method of our clock. Take our clock, call the show method. Now it's only going to appear for a brief second. Just momentarily, I don't know if you saw that. To ensure a clean and proper exit of our application, we need to call the following method. Access our module of sys, call the exit method, then pass in the following. We will take our app object, then call the following method, exec underscore, and then a set of parentheses. It's a method. It's the execute method. It starts the main event loop of the application. It also handles events such as key presses, mouse clicks, or other user interactions. So then we should have a window that stays in place until we exit. Okay, now we have the base functionality all set up. We have a class of digital clock that inherits from the Q widget base class. We're not going to be using main window in this video. Within the constructor of my digital clock, 
I will create a label self dot time label. This will be a label that displays the time. We will call the constructor within the class queue label. Then be sure to pass in self. We will be adding this label directly to our widget of clock. We will need a timer self dot timer equals call the constructor of queue timer, then pass in self. We are adding the timer to the clock. Now with designing the layout of our clock, I'll handle that within the initialize user interface method. We're going to set a title for the window. Self dot set window title method, pass in a string that will be used for the title of the window. Let's say digital clock. Then our window should say digital clock. Let's set the geometry of the window. Self dot set geometry. The first two arguments are going to be for the placement of the window. Where will it appear within your screen? So I'll pick something approximately in the middle for me, but feel free to change these values. Then we need a width for the window. Let's say 300 and a height 100 for the height. So my window should appear approximately in the middle of my screen. The base width is 300. The base height is 100. Now we're going to need a layout manager. I will name this layout manager VBox for a vertical box. VBox equals call the constructor within the class QVBox. This will arrange all of our widgets vertically, but we only have one widget, a time label. So we will take our layout manager of VBox, add widget, that's a method, we will pass in self.timeLabel as an argument. We're adding our label to this layout manager of VBox. Then to set the layout, we will take self, that applies to our clock, call the set layout method, then pass in our layout manager of VBox. So currently if I run this, we don't see anything. Temporarily within our label, I will add some text just as a placeholder so we can see what we're working with. Let's say 12 o'clock. So then we should see something at least, although the font is kind of small. We will be getting rid of this later. We just want to be sure that we can see everything. All right, so after our layout, I would like the label to be center aligned horizontally. Here's how we can set that up. We will take our label self dot time label call the set alignment method access the class of QT access align center. This should center align our time. Now let's work on the font. I can barely read it. We will take our label self dot time label set style sheet. We can pass in multiple CSS like properties. Let's set the font size. I'll set it to be 150 pixels. Now we can read it. You could pick a font, but we're going to change that at the end of this video. We'll import a custom font. But temporarily, let's say font family Arial. You could change the color too. So if I set the color to be green, then the font color is going to be green. But I would like a very specific shade of green. You could always Google a color picker, then pick a very specific color. Uh, let's go with that, something that's bright green. You can copy the hex value, RGB, or HSL. HSL means hue, saturation, and lightness. I'll use HSL values. For the color, we will type HSL, add a set of parentheses, then paste those values. But there is a degree symbol, you do have to get rid of that. Now the font color is going to be bright green. Let's change the background color. Here's how. We will take self, that applies to our clock, then call the set style sheet method, pass in a background color. We will set the background color property to be black. 
I think that looks pretty good. But it doesn't quite do anything quite yet. That's the next step. Let's create a method to update time. No arguments besides self. I will create a local variable of current time equals. Now to get the current time, we can access the class of QTime. QTime dot call the method of current time. We will need to convert it to a string. We will method chain the two string method. Within the two string method, we will design the layout of the time. So I would like hours first. I will type two H's colon minutes. That's two M's colon two S's. To set the text of the label, we will take self dot time label. Call the set text method, then pass in our current time. So if I run this currently, we still have our placeholder time. Let's update it with the current time. We can get rid of our placeholder text of 12. We can delete it. After we set the font, let's call the method of update time. Self dot update time. Now we should display the current time. So me, I'm recording this video at 744 in the morning. If you would like to add AM or PM after your time, here's how. After our string format specifiers, we will add capital AP. A means ante meridium and P means post meridium. So then we should display AM or PM, depending on when you're coding this. Currently the time for me is 745 AM. To get the clock to update every second, we need to connect our timer widget to a slot of update time. We will take our timer, self.timer. This isn't the time label, it's the timer to keep track of the time. During a signal of time out, we will connect the following slot of self.update time. Self.update time. With our timer, we need to trigger a timeout signal every 1000 milliseconds, every second that is. To handle that, we will take our timer, self.timer, call the start method, then pass in 1000 for 1000 milliseconds. So then when we run this program, our clock should update every second and display the new current time. As an added bonus, if you would like to download a custom font, here's how. Using Google or another search engine, I would recommend looking up a font of your choosing. So one font that I like is DS Digital. What we need is a TTF file, meaning true type font. I'll just pick this first link. So these fonts are pretty good. So I'm going to download them. I'll pick this specific font, DS Digit. And again, the file extension is TTF. So once you have your font, move it to your project folder. So for convenience, we have that TTF file right next to our main Python file. Okay, to work with specific fonts, we will need the following import from pyqt5.qtgui import q font as well as q font data base. Since we're going to use our own custom font, we can delete that from the set style sheet method of our time label. So let's set the font right here. We will assign a local variable of font ID equals Q font data base. Q font database is a class for managing and querying fonts available to the application. To add a custom font, we will call the following method within it, add application font. Within the set of quotes, we're going to pass in a file path. This can be a relative file path or an absolute file path. This TTF file is right next to my main Python file. I only need the file name. My font file is named ds digit and get the file extension of TTF. We will create a local variable of font family. We will retrieve the name of the font family from this ID. 
Again, we will access QFont database dot call the application font families method. So this method returns a list of font names. We will pass in our font ID, but there's another step. We're going to use the index of operator and get the index of zero. This will retrieve the first element of the font family. That's because we're working with a list. We will need just the first element at index zero. Now we'll have a font family to work with. Now to set the font, we will create a local variable of my font equals call the class, call the constructor within the class qfont. Pass in the following arguments. Our font family, that's the first argument, and then a font size, let's say 150. To set the font, we will take our time label, self dot time label, call the set font method, then pass in my font, our custom font. So then we should have our custom font, that digital font that we've downloaded. All right, everybody, so that is how to create a digital clock widget using PyQt5.